While I was spending some time in the garden one day transplanting a few plants, I was thinking about some common questions I received regarding my latest rain barrel system and I figured that it may be worth providing a better illustration of what is taking place for those still a little confused about how it all worked and how my PVC drip irrigation system is connected to it. I'll also try to explain and answer some other common questions near the end of the video that may also help you with your rain barrel system. So let's jump right into it. So for those of you just joining for the first time, let's take a quick look at the current rain barrel system. Let's first start at the rain collection device that is installed in my downspout, which is called a diverter. So as water drains down my downspout, the water makes contact with the diverter and is diverted into my PVC inflow pipe that is connected to my first rain barrel. Later in the video, I'll remove the diverter so we can take a closer look at how it is made and how it works. On the opposite side of the wall, we will find that as the water is traveling down the inflow pipe, Pipe, it will finally make its way into my first rain barrel. So when I'm ready to use the water from my rain barrels, the water will exit out of my PVC outflow pipe. Next, the water will make its way through my temporary garden hose and enter my transfer pump that is located inside the black tote to the left. From the transfer pump, the water will travel through a PVC pipe I have buried underground that leads to my garden. Once the water reaches my garden spigot, the water will travel into my PVC drip irrigation pipes and eventually exit the tiny holes in the PVC pipes to water the garden. Pretty straightforward, right? Okay, so let's back up and dive a little deeper into the diverter installed in the downspout since several people were curious about how it worked. Once my rain barrels are completely filled, the rainwater coming down the downspout will no longer be able to enter my rain barrel, so all the water will be rerouted down the center hole in the diverter and out the downspout. Now, I'm not sponsored by the company that makes this diverter, but I must say it's a really simple yet clever design in my opinion, and I've had it installed for several years now, and it has worked extremely well. Another common question I received was, how does the water travel from the first barrel to the second barrel? Well, the type of system I constructed was a bottom fill system. And since water will seek its own level, as water enters the first barrel, the second barrel will also start to fill at just about the same rate, depending on the inflow rate and the size of the bottom connection. It's also worth stating that if I had more barrels installed in series at the same level as the current barrels, the same concept would apply all the barrels will contain approximately the same amount of water. Again, when both barrels are completely filled or have reached the height of the inflow pipe, the inflow pipe to the rain barrels will be bypassed and any excess water will exit the downspout. When it comes to draining the water out of the barrels, just as they filled up together, they will also drain approximately at the same rate. Now, I know for some, seeing a real life example of how things work is better than an animation, so I created a small demo version of my rain barrel setup so we can test some of these scenarios. So for this demo, the water bottles will represent my two rain barrels and the clear airline tubing will represent my PVC outflow pipe. Let's first start with a simple rain field test. As water enters my first bottle, you will see that after a certain point, the water starts to also flow into the second bottle. What is also happening is that water is seeking its own level and shortly after you will see that both bottles will contain roughly the same amount of water inside. If you enjoy these types of videos, let me know by pressing the like button and subscribing as it helps to inform others about this channel and it also motivates me to continue to spend my time making these videos. Now let's drain the bottles and see what happens. As you can see, both bottles appear to drain at the same rate. Let's now take a look at why venting is sometimes necessary in some rain barrel setups like mine, which allows air to enter or escape from the barrel. In this example, both bottles contain water and the outflow valve is fully opened, allowing water to drain out. I will next screw the caps onto the bottles, which will prevent any air from entering. What you will soon notice is that water stops coming out of the outflow valve. The reason for this is simply that no air can enter the bottles to force the water out. Let's now take a look at what happens when I remove the caps from the bottles. As you can see, water exits the outflow valve without any issues. So let's quickly address some other frequently asked questions. 
Why did I not install a first flush into my system? Well, for some, you may wonder what is a first flush? Well, this is a simple concept where you divert the first few gallons of water from your roof to a separate container, since the first gallon or so of rainwater will contain the most contaminants and sediment. For my application, I currently only have the sediment filter as the first line of defense, but I do plan on trying to implement a first flush into my system at some point. Another question I've seen is, should I use sealed barrels or barrels you can remove the lid from? I prefer a hybrid of both, which allow me to remove the lid completely, but also allow me to create an airtight seal when I reattach the lid. This type of barrel also gives me quick access for maintenance or for installing different fittings that require you to have internal access. Additionally, unless you have a really great filtration setup for your rain barrels, over time they will collect debris that you'll want to clean out and having a removable lid would definitely make that process easier. Another question was, why did I choose to make a bottom field rain barrel system? Well first, it requires less hardware compared to top field systems where the first barrel has to fill up completely before the next barrel fills up. So this means you have to install fittings and a connection point at the top of the barrels and bottom which increases the overall cost of the system. Also, I installed my outflow fittings in the bottom of the barrels so that I could drain or use as much water in the barrels as possible. For my old setup, I would always have about 2 to 3 inches of water that I could never use at the bottom because of where my spigot or outflow hole was installed. Another common question is, why use rain barrels for watering your garden? For me, this was a simple question, as one of my goals is to learn how to completely live off the grid if I wanted to, so I'm slowly trying to increase my knowledge in this area. Also, unlike city water that has different chemicals added, rainwater contains fewer chemicals, minerals, and salts which plants prefer, and I have noticed over time that my plants respond a lot better to rainwater than city water. Additionally, most rain barrel setups like mine can be easily removed and used elsewhere if you ever sell your home or prefer to set them up in a different location. So some have wondered, how much rainwater can you collect with a rain barrel system? From my research, I found that one inch of rain on a 1,000 square foot roof would provide about 600 gallons of water. So I first used Google Earth to find the approximate square footage of my roof being used to collect rainwater. Note, I'm using an example property for this demonstration. Once Google Earth displayed my property, I zoomed in to get a better view of the roof and then I used Google Earth's measuring tool to trace around the perimeter of my roof. I then wrote down the displayed area or square footage, which in this case was 668 square feet. I then searched for what is the average annual rainfall for the location of the property. In this case, the property was located in Tennessee and the average rainfall was about 51 inches per year. I then took that number and multiplied it by the amount of gallons my roof collects per inch of rain and ended up with approximately 20,000 gallons. It's that simple, but of course this is a rough estimate using a perfect scenario and a correctly installed rain collection system, so be sure to factor in some margin of error. Overall, I hope this video helped answer some questions you may have had or taught you something maybe you didn't know. If you are currently using a rain collection system or plan to do so, please let me know in the comments below. Also, if you found this video useful or think others might, be sure to like and subscribe to encourage YouTube to share this video with others. Until next time, thanks for watching.